welcome to the OWC instructional series of videos. In this installment, we're going to show you how to upgrade the internal hard drive of a 17-inch PowerBook G4. We've already gathered our materials, have shut down and unplugged the PowerBook, and are working on a soft, static-free surface. We are now ready to begin. The first step is to close your PowerBook and flip it over. Use the two levers on the bottom to release the battery, which you can then remove and set aside. Next, remove these three Phillips screws holding the memory cover in place. You can then lift the cover off and set it aside. To remove the memory modules, gently pull outward on the retaining tabs on one of the modules until it pops up, then slide it out of its socket. Do the same thing with the other module. Next, remove these three Phillips screws from the inside of the battery compartment. Then, remove these two Torx T8 screws in the memory compartment. Finally, remove these five Phillips screws along the hinge edge. Note that the two end screws are longer than the middle three. Now we need to detach the keyboard cable in the memory compartment by opening the very small tabs on the sides by using our nylon pry tool. Once you've done that, you can slide the cable down and out of its slot. Next, you can remove the four Phillips screws on the right-hand side of the power book. Then, remove the four on the left side. Open the power book back up, then gently lift up on the top cover from the hinge area and begin moving forward. If the cover sticks, you may need your nylon tool to loosen it. The hard drive is located here, in the lower left corner of the power book. To remove the hard drive, we'll first need to remove this ribbon cable. Use your nylon tool to gently lift up on the connectors on either end of the cable. Disconnect the hard drive ribbon cable from the logic board the same way. Next, remove the four Torx T8 screws holding the hard drive carrier in place, noting that the lower right screw is shorter than the other three. You can now lift the hard drive carrier out of the power book. We'll need to remove some parts from the old drive to use with the new one. First, slide the metal bracket off the side of the drive and remove the two Phillips screws on this side. Next, remove the two Phillips screws on the other side to detach that bracket. Then, gently rock the ribbon cable connector back and forth to detach it from the hard drive. Finally, carefully peel the metal sheeting from the end of the hard drive, taking care not to bend it out of shape. Line the pins on the new hard drive up with the holes on the ribbon connector and slide the two pieces together. In many cases, there will be some extra pins to the side that don't get covered. That's okay. Next, secure the left side mounting bracket in place with the two captive Phillips screws. Then, replace the two mounting pins on the other side and slide that bracket into place. Finally, slide the metal shield onto the bottom of the drive and press gently to re-adhere it there should be enough residual adhesive to allow it to stick. Set the drive assembly back into the bay and secure it with the four Torx T8 screws. Remember, the short screw goes in the lower right. 
Reconnect the hard drive cable by simply aligning the two connectors and pressing them together. Do the same with the other ribbon cable you removed earlier. We can now set the top cover back into place. As we lower the cover, we need to make sure that the keyboard connector cable feeds through the slot in the logic board and that the edge tabs all go inside the outer case. Once the top cover is in place, push down along the edges to make sure it sits flush. You can now close the lid and replace the four screws on either side. Flip the power book over and slide the keyboard ribbon cable into its socket. To secure it in place, use your nylon tool to push close the tabs. Next, replace the five screws along the hinge edge. Remember that the screws on the outside holes are longer than the ones on the inside. Then, replace the two Torx T8 screws in the memory compartment. The shorter one will go on the right side. Finally, replace the three Phillips screws along the inside edge of the battery compartment. Line up the notch in the memory module with a pin in the memory slot. Insert the module into the slot at a slight angle and gently push to make sure it's all the way in. Once it's in, push down on the edge to lock it into place. Repeat the process with the other module. Finally, slide the memory cover back into place and secure it with the last three Phillips screws. All that's left to do is to set the battery back into the bay and push it in until it locks into place. You may now flip your power book over, open it up, and turn it on.